Hey guys, Happy New Year to you, following my favorites and lenses of 2022. Today's video is my top camera picks of 2022. I'm gonna give you my best newcomer, digital like a camera, best overall digital like a camera, best newcomer, film like a camera, and best non like a camera. And I'll also give an honorary mention to another camera. Let's jump straight in. Hey guys, Matt here from MrLike.com. Quick word of warning, when I say best newcomer, that doesn't automatically mean the latest release from Leica. This video doesn't include the Leica M11 because I don't own the Leica M11. These are the cameras that I own and enjoy using the most. So number one, the best newcomer digital Leica camera for me that I got in 2022. The winner is the amazing Leica Q digital camera. I have done quite a few videos on this camera now and considering it was released in 2015, it took me seven years almost to the day. I got mine in June 2022 and I can't believe looking back that it took me so long to pick up this camera. To me, this is a great way to simplify your gear. If like me, you get deep down in too many cameras and too many lenses and you don't know what to take on a trip, having a camera with a fixed lens solves many, many problems. This is a camera that I actually bought for my like a wedding photography and I think the autofocus on this is better than any of my other cameras. However, it is a great do everything camera. I think if you've got a special trip like I was in Dubai teaching last November, if you want to be a tourist and you don't want to be bothered about thinking about kit and you just need to get good photos, the Lucky Q, or if you want something more modern, the Lucky Q2, these are great cameras to just get the job done and not have to worry about it. You're always gonna get clean shots, it will give you close focus, it will give you shallow depth of field being a full frame camera. It works great at night with a 1.7 maximum aperture lens, 28 mil is a great kind of do everything focal length and yeah, it just ticks all the boxes for me. So you may wonder why this doesn't hold the crown for my best Leica camera of 2022. It's really specific to me, but I really enjoy experimenting with rare and unusual vintage lenses and non-branded lenses. So the biggest problem for me with the Lucky Q is it's a fixed lens and that goes against obviously all the pros, but I like to experiment. So for that reason, this isn't the best tool for me. That brings me on to camera number two. My favorite Leica camera of 2022 and I think most of 2021, the Leica SL. Absolutely amazing. This is my almost do everything camera all the time. I'm a portrait photographer, so when I'm shooting portraits, this is my go-to bit of kit. When I shoot weddings, although I'm using the Lucky Q for kind of the fast auto-focused moment shots, I'm using the SL with fast glass for all the artistic shots. The reason I prefer it to an M camera is because you can adapt pretty much any lens. It's like an L mount, which means with any adapter, you can mount all sorts of exciting lenses. You can do things like this. <laughs> this is a Nikkor 200mm f2 AIS lens. I will try and do a video on this lens at some point. I've had it a long time and I still need to do a nice video. The big bright viewfinder makes it very easy to focus fast glass such as the Noctilux and the build quality is just so tank like. It just feels like really rugged and like you can take it everywhere. You don't have to pamper it quite as much as you would with a, a Leica M camera. So that brings me on to is the like SL perfect for everybody? I would say actually no. 40% of you guys from the polls that I do say that you just photograph a bit of everything. If you photograph a bit of everything, you're better to get a Leica M camera, not a Leica SL camera, because the Leica M cameras are much nicer sized for say street photography, travel photography, and with an EVF, then you can do say more exotic things like fast glass or many of the other benefits you can have with a Leica SL. So my honorary mention goes to Leica M cameras. They are still the the core of Leica and they're, they're still the most popular as I understand it. And the only reason I don't use the M cameras as my main camera is because I'm a portrait guy, not a street guy. If it was a street photographer, I'd definitely have an M camera as my top pick because they're designed to use on the street and they're really good at what they do. So don't underestimate Leica M cameras. They are still fantastic and I still have my Leica M240 and maybe I'll upgrade to an M10 in 2023 we shall see that brings me on nicely to my best newcomer film camera of 2022 it is the 1931 black paint barnack like a one standard model c and this will give you a lucky q equivalent setup if you love lucky q cameras because you can just walk around all day snapping away getting great images what if you could do that with film this is the answer so with the snapshot scope i'll see the full video on this lens 
it's got a scale focus design. You can just go click, 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 right. That gives me three meters distance. Looks at the finder, big, bright finder. Don't need to worry about vintage finders if that's not your thing. Bang, take your shot. If you're good at using the Sony 16 rule to estimate your exposure, you don't even need to have a meter. It's just the pure basics and the stripped back version of a Leica camera for me is just so rewarding. And I enjoy using the 50mm finder for when I do scale focus a 40 or 50mm lens. These cameras are 90 years old, but if you get them CLA'd, they feel like brand new and they are such a joy to use. And as you can see, it's pocket size. So when I'm doing cycling trips or running around various cities taking photos, this is my top choice. Bonus tip, if you've got any cameras with no strap lugs, as you can see here, get yourself a Peak Design tab, which will screw into the tripod socket. And then you can attach your little uh, wrist strap to the tripod socket and you're good to go. And finally, my top pick for a non Leica film camera was the Kawa Caloflex TLR camera. This is a 6x6 format TLR camera, as you can see, a bit like a Rollerflex, but a lot cheaper. And with a better lens, this lens is better than my 3.5 Rolly cord. Pop, pop the lid. Waist level viewfinder, so it gives you a very different viewing experience to a Leica. If I put it next to my Leica Q, you can hopefully see the size is fantastic. I mean, I own Hasblads, I've got the Mamiya RZ, Mamiya 645s, uh, Rolly Flexes. The reason this is so good is the size and I like the vintageness, I think, because it's small, it means I can take it on all my overseas photo shoot trips. The lens is fantastic, so the photos are very rewarding. You've got six by six negatives compared to any 35 mil film with, say, Leica cameras. It's a totally different shooting experience and it doesn't break the bank. Following my recent YouTube poll, I asked what do you want to see more of in video terms in 2023? And he gave me the correct answer, which was mostly more film cameras. So my New Year's resolution for you guys is number one. If you shoot all Leica, treat yourself to using a non Leica camera as your New Year's resolution. And my New Year's resolution for you, number two, is this, if you have never shot film, treat yourself to some vintage Soviet film camera and see how much fun film really can be on a budget. I will review some more affordable film cameras in 2023. So if you've not yet subscribed, smash subscribe and you won't miss those. Let us know in the comments what was your favourite camera of 2022. It'd be interesting to see what, what everyone's camera is. If you enjoyed this video, please smash the like button. As always, a huge thanks to my awesome patrons. And I'll link some playlists next so you can check out some more film cameras.